Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Today we're going to talk about fish euthanasia, which to me is a very, very difficult topic that I really don't want to talk about. But one of my females, the Cambodian colored female that you guys have named Candy Cane, has been struggling. Uh, she bloated and had a few other issues and I've been trying to treat her separately for the past two days but she has been very very quickly going downhill and now she is pine coning and just won't do anything she'll just lay up on her side and is clearly struggling so at this point the best course of option is to humanely euthanize her for comparison here is mr. bubbles who is also not in the best of health because of his cancer but I have moved him to a smaller 0.5 critter keeper where I keep the water just high enough where it's very easy for him to reach the surface. And while he has cancer, the difference between him and the Cambodian female is that he is still very responsive. So right now he's resting and being comfortable, but he's very alert to what's going on. He's watching me and as soon as I would bring food, he'll get very excited and swim up and eat very readily. So in his case, letting him live out his life in a container that will be the most appropriate for his condition, in this case, this critter keeper will work out. As while it's still hot here, I don't have to add in a heater, but as if he makes it a few more months, I will have to add in a small heater. And this in this container, since there is no filter I do have to do complete water changes every day just so I, like I do complete water changes on the betta fry that I am going to be selling in the future so that is kind of the example here he kind of is enjoying laying on his almond leaf that's what he likes to do one of the things that you can look for when you're trying to determine if you should euthanize a fish or not is take a very close look at them take a look at their scales, their body, their eyes, see are they alert, aware, and how they are looking. This is kind of how Mr. Bubbles looks. As you can see, he does have a protrusion on his side. So that is why I made the choice to kind of let him continue uh, to live out his life while he can until he shows any signs of discomfort or struggling or pain. In the case of this Cambodian female, it, in my opinion, it would be best to euthanize her because she's just struggling. She just takes a breath and then she just plops over. So the best thing to do would be to kind of end her suffering. Now, if you're not comfortable in euthanizing your fish, you can let your fish die of natural causes. That is okay. Um, but there are other options of things you can do. Now there are many methods online to how you can euthanize fish and some of them, in my opinion, I don't really approve. For example, um, there are methods where they recommend you decapitate your fish, uh, which is an instant death, but it would be very difficult with a small little fish anyways. There is the method of freezing your fish, where you put your fish in a little bag and then you put it in the freezer, and in my opinion that takes a long time. There's the boiling method, which completely terrifies me. There's also the method of using vodka or alcohol to help euthanize your fish in, um, in conjunction to using clove oil. Personally, I prefer using clove oil. This is the kind of clove oil I use right now. I did get clove leaf oil in the past by an accident. Uh, apparently they are a little different, so clove leaf oil is made from the different part of the clove plant while clove oil is made out of cloves, so you want to get pure uh, clove oil. The brand doesn't really matter. And what you want to get is a container where you can put some water and with a lid so you can shake it. Uh, in my opinion, about three drops, uh, two to three drops of the clove oil is enough to let your fish fall asleep very slowly. You can wait about 10 to five to ten minutes and then when your fish is asleep 
I like to up the dose to about 10 drops. Mix it in, I'll probably mix it in a different container. And then add it and that will uh, kill the fish while the fish is asleep and it is completely unaware of what's going on. So it's not a FDA tested method, but everyone in the fish keeping community has been saying that it is the painless way to euthanize your fish. Now there is a FDA approved chemical you can use and that is called tricane methanyl sulfate. I can't really never pronounce it. It's also known as MS222 or on the market as Finquel or tricane S. And that one, I don't know if you can order it without being a vet. I know that if you talk to your local veterinarian, you might be able to get some. Or you can also ask your veterinarian to maybe euthanize your fish. I don't know, different veterinarians have different procedures, but they might be able to use it. It is a FDA approved uh, chemical used to anesthetize, anesthetize animals. And in higher dosage, it will uh, euthanize your uh, pet humanely and painlessly. The downside is keep in mind that it does lower your pH. So if you have a fish that you keep in high pH, you will have to buffer it so you don't stress out or shock the fish when you use uh, this chemical. There's also other things, there's injections and other chemicals you can use. Now I'm actually not going to euthanize her on camera. That's something I would like to do uh, on my own as I don't really, I want to pay attention to what I'm doing and it would be kind of really upsetting to euthanize a fish in a video. But I wanted to go over what I use. In my experience, I haven't euthanized many fish and even though I've kept bettas for over 10 years, I've only had three of them have uh, the symptoms of pine coning, which is called dropsy. The Cambodian female right now has dropsy. It's hard to film because I'm filming with my phone, but she is pine coning. So that is usually an indicator that it's kind of hopeless in this case and it would be my best interest to kind of and her life um, in the best way that I possibly can. So I wanted to tell you guys and inform you if you would like to see a tutorial video on how to euthanize your fish, there is uh, one that you can find from um, Jenny from Solid Gold Aquatics. She did make a video on how to euthanize uh, goldfish, which you can, the general principle still applies. In my case, instead of using an air stone for aeration, I will use a container with a lid that I will shake to distribute the oils. You have to make sure that the oils from the clove oil are distributed evenly. If you just put some drops, they'll just stay at the top and it won't really work. So you do have to mix them up. Uh, when you do have a special container for euthanasia, either very thoroughly clean your container or have a designated container for euthanizing fish. Um, in my case, this is the official jar that I use. Um, this is the second time I'll be using this jar. And I don't use this jar for housing bettas at all. I only use it uh, for euthanasia for that purpose. Because you don't want to accidentally put another fish in a jar that has some uh, residual uh, clove oil and have your... It's not just unhealthy for your fish to be living even with small amounts of clove oil over an extended period of time. So I hope that you find this video helpful even though it is a sad video um, and it's it's really upsetting when this happens and unfortunately as I have more and more aquariums and more fish statistically um, the rate of deaths will go up because the more fish you have you know the higher chances of someone dying or fish getting old happens uh, back in the day when I used to only have a few fish, you know, I would have to deal with death very rarely. So that is the unfortunate side effect of owning more fish, and especially if you're breeding. Luckily, I did not have to cull much fish at all. Uh, out of my breeding group, I've only culled the most deformed ones that were having a hard time eating and didn't really have a sh chance of uh, thriving or surviving in the future. Everyone else, even if they're a little bit deformed or imperfect, I've been growing out so that I can sell them to you guys and that you may enjoy life with uh, your new betta fish friends. So 
Unfortunately, the time has come to an end for Candy Cane, the Cambodian female, which is really, really unfortunate. Um, I am, I have ordered some more medication. I am going to be uh, growing my arsenal of medicine so I can better treat my fish in the future and use better preventatives to ensure that I do have a high rate of survival. But unfortunately, this girl, you know, it's, it is her time. So that is it for the video. Uh, I'm not going to be asking for likes like I usually do because this is not a happy topic. And um, I don't really have a question for you guys in the comments. It's just something I wanted to let you know and show you so you can know what to do if your fish is really, really sick and really struggling and what you can do to just end and ease the pain of your fish and let them go over their little rainbow bridge. So that's kind of it. I will see you guys on Friday and hopefully we will have much happier things to talk about and oh, Mr. Bubbles is hiding under his almond leaf. He's so cute. He's definitely enjoying his little tank. It's very it's very tiny, but for his health condition, it it works. So, bye.